Having already covered the basics of market noise in the first two episodes of this video series, today I move on to cover an illustration of the damaging effect noise can have on some trading strategies. And because this phenomenon can easily reduce a good strategy into a useless one, it's understanding this that will be required before you can then start to plan how to handle its effects better. Stay tuned. In a moment, I'll be looking at an illustration of the damaging effects that noise can have on trend following systems. This type of system remains one of the most popular that traders attempt to exploit, but as markets become noisier, these effects can be significant on performance. Let's make a start. In those previous episodes, we've looked at the analogy of a drunk man traveling home. And we looked at how this is similar to the noise that's experienced in price action. And then last time, we looked at how different transactions executing on the markets at different times means that although the overall net movement that we see of a meaningful price move is the same, the components within that period of time that make up the individual price moves can be different. And it's this short-term noise that can easily be very different in different scenarios. And that's why this is often classed as more random price movement. We then turned our attention to actual price action. And we considered this scenario here, where the meaningful move is effectively a downtrend between point A and point B, but looked at some of the price action in between, such as this area, that showed high levels of noise, where the price is going up and down seemingly in a random manner, even though the overriding move is downwards. And we looked at other examples of that. So now we turn our attention to the main topic of today's episode, which is why is noise problematic to some trading strategies? So to do that, we'll use another conceptual illustration. Let's first of all consider if price moves occurred in line with sentiment, but without any noise at all. And that's what these straight green lines reflect. So here we could have a simple moving average overlaid on top of the price action. And if we used a very simple strategy where we said if price crosses the moving average in an upwards direction, we'll buy, represented by this entry here, and then if the price action crosses below the moving average, that's where we sell, represented by this point here. And this would, of course, lead to a very nice profit from that trade. But unfortunately, price action doesn't move in this way. Instead, it has a much more erratic nature to it. And as we saw in the previous episode, this is caused by that individual buying and selling action that's going on in the asset, causing these short-term upwards and downward movements, even though we can still see the meaningful price moves that we can see on the left here. And those meaningful moves result in this particular example in exactly the same net movement. So let's now attempt to use the same strategy, which is the price crossing over a moving average as we did previously. But straight away, we can see because we've got a lot more movement in the price, this is going to be a lot trickier. But let's stick to our rules for now and see what happens. So the price crosses above the moving average in an upward direction here, but then very quickly crosses below again here because of that random noise in the price. And in a trend following system, this is what's typically known as a whipsaw. But then a few moments later, we get another opportunity as the price crosses the moving average again here. But again, we get whipsawed. And guess what? The same happens again and again. But then finally, we get an entry signal that manages to persist during this upwards movement. And it's not until this point here that we exit our trade. And so at this point, we've actually made a profit. But the problem here is look at the size of that profit compared to the illustration that had no noise at all. It's significantly less. Furthermore, 
because we were whipsawed out of the market, we would have made some small losses here. We would have had transaction charges for each of these whipsaws. And so this will probably have eaten into that profit even more. And so what is a very profitable strategy without noise becomes much less so with noise. And you may have either heard or read this before where people have said that simple moving average crossover strategies used to work well, but they don't work well anymore. So why is this? Well, typically markets have become noisier and they've become noisier because the participation in those markets has increased. There are now more traders than ever. And that increased participation means that it manifests itself in much noisier price action. Now, the example we looked at a moment ago looked at price crossing the moving average. But equally, the same deterioration in the profitability of systems also applies if you use a dual moving average crossover. Because again, that noisy price action will be causing the shorter term moving average to cross above and below the longer term moving average much more often as well. And that's just one reason why systems that used to work don't work anymore. And our job as a trader has become more difficult. But there are approaches that we can take and things that we can do to alleviate these effects of noise, which we'll be covering in a future episode. But in the next episode, I'm going to be looking at how we can actually take advantage of noise. And specifically here, I'll be looking at an illustration for mean reversion strategies. Okay, so hopefully you're beginning to get some value from this new mini-series. If the next episode's already available, you'll see it top right now. If not, please do subscribe and you'll be notified when it does get released. But now until next time, trade wise, trade safe.